Welcome back. First of all, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit subscribe, press the little bell. That means you don't miss any new videos. If you enjoy the video at the end, by all means, hit like, leave me a comment. It's all really helpful. Now, this is one of our technicals I try and put out on Tuesdays. Sometimes it's me just speaking to you from my front room like this, and sometimes I manage to get out and about. The last few, it's just been here in the front room. So let's see if I can conjure up something a bit different. That's better out here in the fresh air. This week's technical is about grazing clover from a veterinary point of view. I'm not an agronomist. I'm not going to teach you here about how to get these things established, about how to keep them growing, because frankly, I don't know how. What people want to know from us is is it safe to graze? What are the benefits? What are the pitfalls? For those of you that don't know, clover comes in two main varieties, red and white. Both are really popular for a few reasons. They're high in protein, so they're really good for finishing cattle and sheep. They're legumes, which means they fix nitrogen from the air, great for the soil, reduces the need for nitrates. In some cases, farmers are paid to grow them. They're also great for bees. So for all of those reasons, clover is often grown either on its own as part of a mix or to be made into silage. So those are the benefits. That's why people grow them. But are there any pitfalls? And the answer is yes. And really there's two main pitfalls. One is the risk of bloat. Now clover, as I said, is really high in protein. That's fantastic for finishing cattle and sheep. It can also send the rumen microbes, that's the bugs in the rumen, a bit haywire. And when that protein is really rapidly broken down, that can cause a bloat. <clears throat> By bloat, I mean the rumen, the main stomach compartment, simply blows up. Eventually, what that causes is suffocation because it means the lungs, the thorax can't expand and the animal can't breathe. Obviously, that isn't great. It often comes on quite suddenly. So what can you do to reduce the risk of livestock bloating on clover rich swords? First thing you can do is limit their access when they're introduced. That's going to help transition these animals onto this diet often and this applies to a lot of diets a lot of rations it's the transition period where the greatest risk is because the rumen and the bugs within it are fantastic they just need a bit of time to adapt to different diets it's that rapid switch which can cause the issues try not to turn them out when they're very hungry or on damp days that is more likely to overload the rumen bugs and cause this bloat try and provide some fiber with the clover. So that might be bales of hay or straw so they can nibble at that. Again, that is gonna reduce their intake of the clover and hence reduce the risk of bloating. There is the use of anti-bloat feed additives described. I must admit, I've not come across them, but for completeness, they do exist. The risk of bloat from clover silage seems to be much lower, but as always, transitioning stock carefully onto a ration, it makes good sense from a productivity point of view, regardless of the risk of bloat. The other main issue we come across from a veterinary point of view with clover relates almost exclusively to red clover rather than white. And the reason is red clover has relatively higher levels of compounds called phytoestrogens. And most of you will probably be aware of what estrogens are roughly, they are a female reproductive hormone. Because they contain a lot of these phytoestrogens, they can affect fertility, especially in sheep. White clover is far less likely to cause issues, but when it's diseased or stressed, it tends to produce high levels, and hence you can potentially see problems then. If you are mating or tupping ewes while they're grazing red clover, that can significantly reduce their fertility because those phytoestrogens will interfere with the normal reproductive cycle. Saying that, I'm aware that some seed companies are working on varieties of red clover that have lower phytoestrogen levels. So that may change in the future. Nonetheless, 
the conventional advice is for ewes not to graze red clover or diseased white clover or be eating clover silage for six weeks before and six weeks after tuffing or mating, whatever it's called where you're from. Although you would think the same compounds should affect fertility in male sheep, there doesn't seem to be much of an effect. Certainly there are no reports of it causing infertility in male stock. It's much rarer for breeding cattle versus breeding sheep to be grazing clover. In any case, where cattle have been fed clover silage experimentally, it doesn't seem to have any effect on their fertility. So fertility effects of clover appear to be limited to, or at least mainly affect ewes, female sheep. So those are the main two issues we tend to see with clover, bloating and infertility in ewes. There are a couple of other things that can happen with clover. It's high in calcium, so sometimes you can see calcium carbonate kidney stones with when you graze male sheep on clover. It's not very common, but it is recorded in the literature. And also those same oestrogens, those phytoestrogens, can in theory make prolapses in sheep more likely because they cause swelling of the tissues. So in summary, clover is a great plant to grow for the livestock who graze it, but also from a whole farm point of view, there are a few pitfalls from a veterinary perspective, but they can be easily managed and they shouldn't put anyone off growing clover to graze or to make silage. That's it for this one. I'll put some links to more technical information in the video description. If you liked it, please press subscribe, leave me a comment and hit like. That's it for now, over and out.